The great minds of Murata have created the world's smallest IR sensor that is I2C compatible and reflowable. I want to find out where we might use it in the future, how we can put it in design, and just ask, why did they make it? Let's go talk to Murata. It's summer. Thank you very much for having me on this very nice on the booth. You. So you've got the world's smallest I2C reflowable IR sensor. What, what, what's the motivation in creating that? So biggest motivation is a uh, form factor. You know, you open up a lot of these products and you go to the PCBA and you see the only product that is leaded is the PIR sensor. Mm -hmm. And they have a really protruding lens design. So having a reflowable sensor allows you to just cut process costs. So mm -hmm. don't have to have any lead cutting, nothing to do with leading, uh, like leaded sensors. Everything's uh, SMT. The other thing is the uh, low Z height. So you can see it's quite lower Z height than a lot of the leaded sensors. This tiny, yeah, it's, it's so thin. Very thin. So what that allows is for us to design a very smaller focal length. And then your lens is, uh, design is, you know, more flatter as well. Right. So, so we say reflowable, this can actually go through an oven. Yes. This IR sensor. Wow, that is stunning. Okay, so let's, let's talk about sort of applications of this. Where are the engineers putting this into the designs? Where is this going to be into the future? Well, main use case is motion sensing. Yep. So, but motion sensing is so broad. So main application is in a smart home. Yes. So you see the smart thermostats, doorbells, cameras, and they all use PIR sensors and they're all shifting from analog to digital. Now, a lot of them still use some of the, the leaded and they do see value in having everything surface mode. Right, so also when I see something really small like this, I think of all the applications that it will have in, in very you know, miniaturized sensors and such, and oftentimes they're low power. So with a sensor like this, is that something that's been designed in mind for low power use? And what sort of power use can I expect out yeah, of it? Yeah, no, of course. So low power is what's uh, one of the big driving factors. So a lot of these are in battery operated devices. So yep. if you have a doorbell, it's gonna be battery operated or, yes. you know? and you want to save battery consumption. But the battery consumption doesn't actually come from the component itself. The component is like eight microamps with the electrodes themselves, nanoamp range. Wow. But where does power consumption come from is waking up the MCU when it doesn't need to be woken up. Mm -hmm. So if you have false readings, false detections that wake up the MCU or tell the camera to start recording when it doesn't need to be, you know, that really draws yes. a lot of the power. Completely. So how do you actually deal with the false detections? Because when I think of an IR sensor, obviously it's taking an IR light. And then how, how could it possibly, uh, you know, not confuse me with the sun coming out or the clouds? Now, of course. How, yeah. does, how, does it, how does it attack that problem? So talking about false readings, one major is, uh, you know, white light, but also RFI. So RF immunity really? is really key. So okay. with RF, you know, you have 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz signals, and that can set off a PIR sensor. And like I mentioned, it's very important to save current consumption mm -hmm. with not having any false readings. So that, that's actually really where our sensor shines. Because we've done a lot of testing with uh, you know, this 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz. We've gone high power from 20 dBm to 24 dBm. Wow. And we've actually put the antenna quite close. Uh, and that's really good flexibility for the engineers. You know, they can place the antenna quite close to the PIR without having to worry about any false readings. Yeah, didn't even know that was an issue. So now that I've been convinced by you, right, I would like to buy the sensor and put it into a design. What have I got to worry about? Is, is there anything in terms of, you know, uh, great, you've got like a lovely, easy to use footprint there, but do I need some sort of lens on the front of it? What, what considerations am I dealing with here? So for the most part, you don't have to do much from the design point of view. That's why we made it digital. That's why we made it, you know, I squared C interface. That's why we made it surface mount and reflowable. Mm -hmm. There's not much work that has to be on the design side. So no worry about amplification stage, no AD converter, nothing like that. Right. But every PIR sensor does need a lens. So with lenses, we you know have customers do custom lens design or they usually have an off-the-shelf lens. And that's where Murata, we have a lot of support in that. So if you choose a lens uh, supplier, we can obviously work with you and help you optimize your design. Right. Can I kind of pop a question at you as well? Yeah. What's, what's, so this is mainly a good use case for this is human detection. What sort of my maximum range that you think you can get with this? Yeah, yeah, of course. So that actually really depends on the lens. So okay. The, Conveniently. The field of view, the range all depend on the lens. Uh, but generally, for example, for outdoor use case for security cameras, uh, think like, you know, 10 to 15 meters easily. So, so every single 
application of this sensor can be different. It's not just for human detection. Yeah. What's available to me to configure, to make this my own? Yeah, of course. So you can see this demo kit right here. You yeah. know, it's very simple application where you can see these two thresholds. Mm -hmm. so you can actually set the sensitivity. Great. So if you want it more sensitive, you know, you pull in the thresholds. If you want it less sensitive, you pull out the thresholds. Yep, yep. And what it can do is very configurable where you can set the window time. You can set how many times it passes the threshold for it to set off the interrupt. So that's really convenient. So it can be how sensitive, however as sensitive you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And it can set the interrupt and let the MC know, hey, we detected motion. Great. Thank you very much for having me on the booth. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, where can people find out more about this? On our website. Marana. On the website? Yeah. Beautiful. You're also most welcome to come to IP Exchange. You can register your interest to check out one of these sensors and we'll get you in touch with them directly. Remember, like, subscribe and stay disruptive.